Day two of the NCAA Softball Regionals, and in Gainesville, the defending national champion and number one national seed Florida Gators will send Lauren Hager to the circle against regional number two seed Hofstra. The defensive-minded pride got here with a nail-biting win over Florida Atlantic. Only four hits in the game for the pride. Brittany Alaka, the big one, the sixth inning, and Hofstra came away one nothing winners. Florida, on the other hand, had business as usual. A school record tying 17 strikeouts from Alicia Acasio. How will the Gators handle a tougher test? We'll find out next. You're watching the NCAA Softball Regionals presented by Capital One. And we're coming your way from Gainesville, Florida and Katie Seashole Presley Stadium as the defending national champions, the Florida Gators, play in the winner's bracket against upstart Hofstra. How did they get here? Tough ones yesterday, especially for Hofstra. They squeezed by in the sixth inning. Florida wasn't great at the plate, but got the job done with a 6-0 win over Florida A&M. Alongside a three-time national champion herself, Jenny Dalton-Hill, I'm Jonathan Yardley in Gainesville. Jenny, high expectations for Florida all season long. Right now, are they playing like a national championship team? You know, yesterday I would say that they really struggled at the plate. Coming in against FAMU, we were looking for a little bit more offense. They were only one for 12 with runners in scoring position. Today we're looking for that offensive production to really step up against Hofstra. In terms of offensive production all year, Lauren Hager and Kelsey Stewart, two of the keys for Florida. And we're going to see Hager in the circle today after she went 0 for 3 at the plate yesterday. Kelsey Stewart, terrific all season long, and she was the one who really was on fire against Florida a &M. She was. Lauren Hager coming into the circle today as the career leader in NCAA history with 60 career wins in the circle and 60 home runs. Kelsey Stewart, however, she's really the one that we are looking at today. She leads off for the Florida Gators in that one spot, and yesterday she was in Fuego, taking the ball down the first base line for the first hit of the game for a triple, her next at bat taking it down the left field line for a single, then reading the defense and placing it perfectly in the 5-6 hole. Kelsey Stewart going three for four. She's really the player to watch today for Florida. Now on the Hofstra side, a little bit more of the focus is on defense. 13th in the country in ERA, 18th in defense, and yesterday against Florida Atlantic, a lot of base runners on for the Owls, but none of them came home to score. The pride defense came to play. Defense is really where it was at. They came to play, and what happened was the ball was going up the middle primarily, but the defense came up huge with diving plays, absolutely on spot, and throws to the plate that were keeping them in the game. But it was the the ball back to Perone in the circle, the throw home to save the lead. Perone really in the circle today will be the difference in this game. In the circle for Florida, Lauren Hager, SEC Pitcher of the Year, and the leader of this team emotionally and in terms of production. And she gets the call after Alicia Acasio struck out 17 yesterday. Tough act to follow. Definitely a tough act to follow, but not uncharacteristic follow for Lauren Hager. She is a power pitcher coming in throwing 66 to 68 miles an hour. She really is a power pitcher. She throws a nasty curve that's going to run in on the hands of a lefty and away from a righty, but it's the changeup that will go ahead and mix the speeds for her today. She is, an, she is emotional in the circle, but she's really changed from last year to this year because she's become such a leader in the circle for the Gators. There's Larissa Anderson. Here's the Hofstra starting lineup. Chloe Fitzgerald at the top of the lineup had two of their four hits yesterday. Corinne Bailey, who led them in the Colonial Athletic Association tournament, yet to get going in this regional. They're going to need production throughout this lineup today. Lauren Hager gets us started. Chloe Fitzgerald fouls off the first pitch this afternoon in the winner's bracket here in Gainesville. Florida and Hofstra squaring off. Florida Atlantic, Florida A&M meet at 3.30. And then one more elimination game tonight at 6 to see who will play in the final on Sunday. And I'm already impressed with Chloe Fitzgerald as she steps into the box, swinging at the first pitch, knowing that Hager trying to get ahead, but then showing her patience, stepping in and taking that rise ball for a ball. Chops that one to short. Katie Medina in time to first base to get Fitzgerald. 
We were talking Medina only had one play yesterday. Very few balls hit in play when your pitcher, Alicia Acasio, strikes out 17. Right away, a test handled easily by the Gator defense. And FAMU yesterday was just kind of baffled by the pitching of Acasio today with Hager facing Hofstra. Hofstra known to put the bat on the ball. Defense will be a key for the Gators today. First pitch misses inside to Corinne Bailey. She slugged 2,000. That means she's averaging two bases for every plate appearance in the CAA tournament. Fouls this one off, and it's going to reach the seats on the third base side. Yesterday, though, Bailey 0 for 2. She walked, hit into a double play, and fouled out. And if Hofstra's going to go anywhere in this tournament, a lot of it's going to ride on her shoulders offensively. You're right, and last year she really felt the pressure of trying to produce. This year she's settled in nicely and become an offensive producer for Hofstra. You're saying I shouldn't put extra pressure on her in the first inning. You know what? She can't hear you, so it's <laughs> probably okay. It's May in Florida, so it's hot, 84 degrees. But a beautiful afternoon right now. And the mindset of Hofstra right now, really showing patience at the plate. That's the best way to get to Hager in the circle. The ability to stay controlled and consistent in your at-bats, that will put Hofstra ahead, and the Gators need to respond. Swinging away 3-1, and she popped it up. Medina called off by the center fielder, Kirsty Merritt. And there are two away for Florida. Defending national champions and Tim Walton's troops have been, of course, high in the rankings all season long. 51-6 and six after that great start. And we told you, Lauren Hager, Kelsey Stewart, finalists for National Player of the Year. First pitch swinging Kim Smith, and it's out of the reach of the Florida first baseman today, Janelle Wheaton, 0-1. I would have to say that the pitching that both Hofstra and Florida will face today plays more into the wheelhouse of what they're used to. Yesterday, both of them facing opponents that weren't necessarily putting pitches in the strike zone consistently. So today, with Hager on the mound, they will be looking for pitches close. Kim Smith fouls that one off. She scored the only run yesterday in Hofstra's win over Florida Atlantic. She had a great at bat where she fouled off 10 pitches. It was a 14 pitch total at bat. And then she got hit on the first pitch of her next at bat, came around to score the winning run. Here she's down 0-2 and she fouls that one off again. Well, and you, you talk about how they hit her in her next at bat. Those free passes are what will kill you in the postseason. When you put runners on without outs, it gives the ability to move them and then hit them in. And that timely base Base running and hitting is huge. It's fouled back to the screen. Smith stays alive. Lauren Hager suffered her first loss of the year in the SEC semifinal last weekend. And she gives up her first hit of today's game off the bat of Kim Smith here in the first. And Hager really needing to keep this ball in the corner, but not able to do so. And that ball was absolutely tattooed back up the middle. Too hard for Hager to put a glove on. And the Hofstra Pride have their first base runner. We'll bring up Lacey Clark, the second baseman. It's called a strike on the outside corner. And I love that call by Hager being able to come in with a leadoff changeup on that at bat, keeping Lacey Clark honest in the box, not squaring up a first pitch hard. That's in there as well. Matt Dunbar calling balls and strikes behind the plate today. Mario Calabrese and Anthony Smalls, the other umpires this afternoon. You can hear this crowd, 1,500 strong, reacting to that one. Well, in the way that Hager has set up Lacey Clark, she started her with the off speed, came right back down the middle for strike number one, then jams her hard on the hands, look for another off speed pitch here. That's fouled back, and again, Hofstra making Hager work here in the first inning. 
And it's that off speed that will be the difference for Hager today. You cannot consistently just throw your hard pitches and expect Hofstra to be behind. Hofstra will be able to make the adjustment. It's that off speed, that change up that will be able to change the landscape of this game. If Hofstra is not able to dig in and just drive through the balls that are coming in hard. Matt Dunbar, the home plate umpire, addressing the Hofstra dugout at the moment. Larissa Anderson down from third base wants to know just what he said to her dugout. Well, because the the message being sent she was so far away from, he, she wants to make sure that she's understanding and able to communicate with her team, and especially this early in a game, she wants to keep the reins and the emotions <laughs> in check. And you want to stay on the umpire's good side, certainly in the first inning. <laughs> um, that, that probably will p play into this game as we go along, yes. Two strikes on the hitter with two outs in the first. Down the left field line, diving catch. She couldn't come up with it. It's a foul ball. It's called a foul ball all the way. And it'll just be another 1-2 pitch coming. DeWitt, a great effort, couldn't catch it cleanly. And home plate umpire Matt Dunbar had a great eye taking himself down the line to read it. It is not where she made, where her body is when she makes contact with it. It is where the ball is in the air that he is ruling on. And so he says that she made contact with it in foul territory. Swing and a miss, strike three. And after a close call, Lauren Hager gets out of the first for Florida. The Gators will try and do it at the plate when we come back. Off-speed pitch in the air to left field. Fitzgerald goes back, off the wall. Kirsty Merritt holds at second base as Transu fields it in left field. It's tough to get one out of this ballpark, and Kirsty Merritt came close. Chopped over the third baseman. Transu can't get there, it's gonna score a run. Lauren Hager drives in Kirsty Merritt, and Florida's on top, one nothing here in the first. hit deep. That's out of here. Four nothing Florida in the bottom of the first. Taylor Fuller goes deep. Chase that one. Striking out the side Lauren Hager and it's all Florida through an inning and a half here in Gainesville. Good morning, good afternoon, good night from Lauren Hager. Big spot here, Hofstra trying to keep it a four run game. Stewart trying to extend that Gator lead. Slapped up the middle for a base hit. Here comes McLean, she scores without a throw. Kelsey Stewart back on the board, 6-0 Florida. Lauren Hager one strike away from the win. Ball game on the outside corner. Overpowering performance from Lauren Hager and a four-run first inning carries the number one national seed Florida Gators to the regional final. Here's a look at it. They'll play tomorrow against Florida Atlantic, Florida A&M, or Hofstra. Florida Atlantic, Florida A&M coming your way next in about 30 minutes right here on ESPN3. For our great crew, for my partner Jenny Dalton-Hill, I'm Jonathan Yardley. The final here in game number three of the Gainesville Regional. Florida seven, Hofstra nothing. We're gonna take a quick break and come back. So long from Gainesville, Florida's on to the regional final.